Hey YouTubers, I wanted to make this video for a long time. If you're a hobbyist, uh, I like to do model railroading, and I'm also a, a woodworker and do a lot of intricate things, so this is one of the handiest tools ever. And they're really good. I mean, they come with a, a tremendous amount of assorted bits and brushes and cutting tools, and all kinds of things, a handy dandy little kit. You can go ahead and open them up and you're going to have a wrench, and which I'm going to have to go find now. I know it's in the other room. But one of the bad things about the Dremel is it's like as, as good a tool as it is, I don't care if you have this one or another model, the weak link in it is a plastic uh, sleeve that takes the motor and ties it in on the shaft to the spindle and it fails and they don't have them you can't order them they're not even on the parts list so you've got a tool now that just is broken loose so this is I've had this for years and this is the second time mine is broken but I'm going to show you how easy it is to fix it and I honestly think that you can get away with it and uh, I'll fix it the same way but hopefully with a little bit better material and it'll last even longer but I use it this as a cutter I really put this thing to work so I'm not surprised that it breaks so give me a second uh, another little handy tool I have is cobalt makes some really nice tools and this is one of them the, the grandma of course has special cutters this has all these special bits and they're on both ends, so you have all the different sizes, and it's really handy to have. It stays in my, my toolbox or my model trains. But I'm going to go ahead and open this thing up, then I'll show you what it looks like, then I'll show you the part that fails. Okay, so I got pretty much everything out here I'm going to need. I got a pair of Nino nose pliers, so I'm going to need those in a minute. This is ice cubes, and inside of there is some 5 8 inch heat shrink. And I'm getting it as cold as I can because in this is some boiling hot water. Now this is fiber reinforced hose that I got at Home Depot this morning. It's half inch ID, or I'm sorry, quarter inch ID, half inch OD. And it's exactly 31 30 seconds long, which is what it takes for this particular Dremel. So I'm going to drop that in boiling water. And it sinks and it's going to start getting soft. Then, the hard one to install, of course, is this guy here. I've also got a glove back here because when that comes out, it's going to be pretty warm. Now, I would typically say this isn't necessary, and I didn't do it before, but I'm thinking it might be kind of like the right thing to do to. Put a little silicone on this guy to kind of fill and work as a somewhat of an adhesive. We're not going to use very much at all. We're just this is going to compress down and seal it pretty good anyway. So we're just going to put just a little bit on here because I really don't want it squeezing out all over the place. And since my fingers are already messed up, I'll mess them up some more. So it does a couple of things. It kind of lubes it a little bit. And it puts just probably enough silicone in there to help this thing bond up. Which is what it needs to do. I think my fingers are taking too much of it off, so I'll just use a toothpick, let it go around at an angle, and it fills up a little bit the grooves in this piece. And like I said, I don't want too much. Now, one of the things you have to keep in mind is once you bring this thing out, you have very little time to get the heat, to get the tube on this warm, and kind of even less time Like I said, I don't want it on the bearings. 
So, and to keep that from happening, what I've done is I've brought this plate in. This plate is off my pulley puller, and it'll fit right in here. So when I put the tube on, it won't let it go any further than that, and I'll be fine once it goes into the assembly. So, so now I'm kind of set. I've got this tape on here just to kind of keep the bearings moving around too much in the, in the, uh, in the motor. I don't want it to kind of move around too much. I've already off the brushes, so I'll have to put the brushes back in place when I'm done. So, once you get that pretty well set up, you don't want to wait too long either because now the sealant's starting to cure. And like I say, you don't have a lot of time here. So, this sucker is hot when it comes out. Again, I want to try and put it on here first. So, like I say, it is warm, but it goes right on. Then, you can stick this on, and it's wet, and it's very cold. And it should slide on pretty easily because it is wet and it is cold. But you got to be fairly fast because it is going to start shrinking as soon as you get started here. And it already has. But now it's on. And then you have to get this guy in. And again, I want to use this to make sure it doesn't go too far. And it's in place. The shrink went too far, but I can cut that off. So now this needs to set for a while, but as you can see, it's joined. The shrink is already getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Then I'm going to have to take an X-Acto knife and cut right around here. And then that should fit. This is the, this is really the situation you got to be careful of. The bearings should be able to go right back where they were. It looks like they're going to fit perfectly. So that's the challenge that you have to take. So that has to sit. And that basically gets you where you want to be. And like I said, I'm going to let this cure. Then I'll come back in and just trim this little bit of shrink. It obviously looks just a little bit too long. But I got just the right spacing in there and the bearings line up. So I'll let that sit probably overnight and then I'll get back to this and we'll put it all back together tomorrow and uh, run the rascal and see how it works. It should work okay. And then the last thing I'll do too is take and heat this shrink a little bit more with the flame to get it to tighten up even more. In fact, I should probably do that now. In fact, I think I will because once that sealant is, has sealed, it may not compress as much as I'd like. So I'll do it just a little bit. So give me just a second here and I'll get the flame. And of course, the fun thing now is being able to turn this While the flame is engaged, and this is a two to one shrink. And it seems to be taking it down a little bit, so I only want to take it down a little bit. by the edge and really make it come down good so that has shrunk a little bit more and it's even backed away as you can see a little bit so that ought to work out fine okay so I kind of uh, got ahead of myself and I got this back together but I'm going to tell you what I ended up doing this thing right here uh, is what I was trying to use but they are so rigid that they basically will not conform around the teeth as you can see the splaying teeth 
like right here, and of course back here on the plastic part. What I've ended up having to do is this part here was so chewed up on the end that when I, well I guess I should start by telling you that finding that these don't work, I went back to looking for a coupler. And believe it or not, I found them. Now, Dremel shows them, but when I went back on the website with Dremel, I still could not find them. So I ended up going to replacementparts.com. And the parts you get is the actual replacement part with the splines in it, as you can see. Well, they're kind of hard to see. That's better with the dark background. But as you can see, it's very thin-walled. And that, of course, lets those splines move. And as they flex back and forth with the torque being applied and reduced forward and on this on this Dremel, they'll weaken, and that's the weak link. So what I did was I put epoxy in the end and then slid it over the geared spline, the spline geared shaft and let that cure for 24 hours. I then put the other end on and I think you can see that there I think you can see that there's, I put shrink, it's right there on both ends, and then shrunk it down. I left the center open. Uh, the half inch shrink that I use, it's a two to one shrink. It just barely fits on there. It has to be wet to go on. But that took care of it. So these things are too rigid. You could use the softer ones, and that mine lasted for quite a while. I think these will last a lot longer. Originally they did. Uh, they're $1.48 by the way. So I bought two. Probably never will need the second one. Uh, I'm not concerned about the epoxy on this because I'm sure I can peel the rubber off later if I have to and I'll have the extension of the drive which is was worn down to a nub. So I end up with basically twice the gripping. You can actually see the splines inside of it so I end up with twice the gripping that I had, which gets it back to the original length, which isn't that much. And uh, like I say, it's cured. So I'm going to put this back together. And of course, it's just the six screws. The motor's in place. Everything is really in good shape. It's uh, a shame to waste a, a good machine. So again, uh, I'll show you while I put this back together. If you go to replacementparts.com, and it's the Dremel coupling G486. And they're $1.48. I got them within, well, within a week, easily. And that's the Dremel information on them. So if you go to Dremel, they may have them. And I would assume that they don't charge any more. So Dremel finally came up with the parts because I know they didn't have them before because I even called Dremel and they said, no, they don't carry them, they don't exist. So I'm assuming that Dremel makes these since their name's on it. So, And this one's been around a while. It looks like September of 01. And here it's 12. So don't know what the shelf life is of these things. I'm hoping it's long. <laughs> but I've had this long enough. I've gotten a lot of use out of it. But again, I just hate to see uh, a good machine go to waste just because of a $1.48 part. So I hope that helps you if you if you have one of these and you've been trying to figure out how to get the parts for it and get it back in operation. You don't need the shrink and if your gear is not chewed up you don't need the epoxy. Uh, again I used it because I was down to less than half of the teeth on that and that just makes it wear out twice as fast. Uh, we'll see how the epoxy works out. It may put a lot of pressure on the center part but I think this thing can take a lot of flexing a lot of torque. It's just the teeth get worn out on the inside and somehow they grind down the the neoprene or whatever the harder substance is in there 
haven't figured that out, but that's how it works. So I'll put this back together. We'll turn it on, see if it whizzes and works, and then that'll be about it. So I hope this helped you. I hope you, if you're looking for these parts, you now have a, a source to go to. I think they showed they still had 15 or 18 of them in stock. So it's going to be a first come, first serve, but I would assume that they can get more of them. I would hope they can anyway. Okay, so it's all back together. And let's see if it's going to work. Okay, I'm back in business and I get back to working on this locomotive to re-engine it, which is where I failed about 10 days ago. So, back to work. So I hope this helped. Again, thanks for watching. Any comments, please leave them. And uh, again, uh, good luck keeping these things working. They're, uh, they're well worth it. I, whoever invented this thing, I hope they uh, prospered well. It's a great invention and a great tool. Again, thanks for watching.